is the most visually stunning and yet useless plane ever built. The B-58 Hustler is visually stunning. It is beautiful. I remember seeing it for the first time in a coloring book my parents gave me when I was a child. For the time, it was also one of the most advanced aircraft ever built and operated. And yet its operation story has been short and unremarkable, or better, it was punctuated by records and accidents, but it never fired a shot in anger, not it really contributed to the general deterrence mission. This is the first video of a series where we will go through its history and the myriad of groundbreaking technologies implemented on the plane. As usual, stay till the end, because the stuff that we are going to discuss here is very difficult to find anywhere else. Curtis LeMay was already a legend in 1948 when he returned to the United States to head the Strategic Air Command from its headquarters at Offutt Air Force Base. He found that this small situation, half of the planes were not available, the crews were poorly trained, the base security was disregarded. Mock bombing results were appalling, so with his characteristic energy he set off to fix the situation. Under his tenure, many staples of the Air Force doctrine during the Cold War were implemented. But for our story, what is important is that a particular program happened under his supervision. One step back. Since October 1946, the Air Force was running a theoretical study known as GIBO-1 to define the general configuration of the bomber of the future. However, since those years were years of booming developments in aerospace technology, in April 1950 the Air Force moved on to the GIBO-2 concept. It was supposed to be a long-range bomber program, but the speed was left undefined. The acceptable speed range was set from transonic to moderately supersonic. Uh, we will cover the details in a future video, but in 1951 two proposals received funding for further development. The Boeing proposal was discarded because it was thought to be less performing than the conveyor model. After all, Boeing already had on its table the design of one of the most famous military planes of our times. The convert proposal though was for a small delta-wing parasite aircraft launched from a derivative of the turboprop B-36. Uh, the parasite idea was quickly abandoned even because the new air refueling capabilities being developed at the time, well, they rapidly pushed the parasite planes in the Curiosity realms. However, the new bomber configuration remained the same a beautiful delta wing. 
The official development contract was issued in February 1953. So while LeMay finally seemed to have his supersonic bomber, Convair was also working on the F-102 and the F-106. While it is clear that the experience of the two fighters heavily influenced the B-58 configuration, the B-58 actually inherited something else from the fighter programs. For the F-102B, the so-called Cook Ridge approach was taken. No prototype was built, but a limited number of production units had to be delivered, so changes could be incorporated directly on the production line. This could shorten the time to delivery if there was just a limited number of changes to make, but they risk having a relatively large number of underperforming airplanes already built that might have required a complex and expensive retrofit. Obviously, the same approach was chosen for the B-58. The first B-58 rolled out from the production line in August 1956, and the maiden flight happened in November. The flight testing program was conducted on 30 different airframes, each of them a bit different from the previous one, as <laughs> all the improvements were progressively incorporated. The test campaign was concluded in April 1959. At the end of the day, 30 development and 86 production B-58A were produced. Eventually, all the 30 test airframes were converted to production standard with a painfully expensive program. If in this moment you are thinking to what is happening with a much more modern plane, I won't stop you. In August 1960, the B-58 was declared operational. It was a beautiful, elegant Delta Wing aircraft with four large engines. It seemed coming straight from a Jeff Oakey comics. The plane took its place in the United States Air Force in the role of deep nuclear strike with a large nuclear weapon. Curtis LeMay finally could have a go with his supersonic bomber and we are wondering if he kept smoking his cigar during the flight. Also, in the same years, the plane kept obtaining speed and altitude records, increasing its prestige and exposure with the media. So everything was good and they lived happily ever after. No, it was a disaster. The plane was horribly expensive to build. Pilot training was also expensive because they had to be trained on the F-102 Delta Dagger to familiarize with the peculiarity of Delta wings. The massive amount of new technology incorporated into the plane required highly trained ground personnel and an insane amount of man hours to keep it operational. Pilots loved the plane because its speed performance was stunning. It could cruise at Mach 2 at high altitude, but it was tormentingly difficult to fly, requiring constant attention and supervision. It suffered a sudden shift of center of gravity, it was easy to depart into spin and very difficult to recover. It took off and landed at scary high speed and frightening angles of attack. In 10 years of operating life, 20% of the B-58s were lost in flight accidents. When LeMay flew in one, he found it cramped and unsuitable for long-duration missions. Finally, the operating range was never really satisfactory and the B-58 required too many tanker missions to execute its own. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom, it was worse. The 1st of May 1960, the Al-2 spy plane flown by Francis Gary Powers was shot down by an S-75 Dvina Soviet surface to missile, well within the territory of the Soviet Union. This obviously caused concern, but the B-58 that was just entering service seemed safe at almost 20 km above the ground at a speed of Mach 2. Then reports of the missile capabilities and the Soviet air defense density started to pour in. The B-58 production was not over yet, and the plane was already obsolete. So the B-58 wings changed their tactics to low-level penetration, a mission in which it was spectacular to see. However, flying a plane difficult to handle and up to the ground well, is definitely not ideal, and the speed at sea level was subsonic, and the operating range was even shorter. It was 
clear only a matter of time. When the young McNamara became secretary of the defense, the B-58 was one of the programs that attracted his attention. It was a hard political fight, but the United States Air Force was ordered to decommission the plane by 1970. And so it happened. The career of the B-58 lasted only about 10 years, but is this the end? Well, for the plane, yes, but not for our story. If you want to learn more about the Delta Wings, there are plenty of videos on the channel and they are appearing beside me, but before clicking on them, subscribe and like so YouTube will know that this is a good video on a good channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video, because you will watch it, will you?